Now we're going to have a, just a brief digression. And I want to remind, because our previous results showed that eigenvalues of the covariance matrix are so important because they give the directions of maximal variance and minimal variance in our cloud of points in a high dimensional space. Um, it turns out that this question about eigenvectors and eigenvalues of real symmetric matrices is a very fundamental uh, part of linear algebra. And I want to recall what we know in that situation without giving proofs. Um, so essentially, this is uh, called the spectral theorem for real symmetric matrices. And um, it says that we know the following thing. So let's suppose that D is a real val real by real I mean real entries k by k symmetric matrix then first of all we know then first of all we know that all of the eigenvalues of D are real. So if you take a general matrix, uh, even with real entries, then you know that to find its eigenvalues, you're going to look at its characteristic polynomial, which is going to be a, K, a degree K polynomial. Typically, some of the eigenvalues of that matrix are going to be complex numbers, but not if D is symmetric. If D is symmetric, it forces all of the eigenvalues to be real. Uh, in addition, If u transpose d u is bigger than or equal to zero for all vectors u, then um, not only are the eigenvalues real, they're bigger than or equal to zero. So we have k eigenvalues lambda 1 down to lambda k. And under this additional assumption, they're all non-negative. And this condition, the condition if, well, let's just put it this way. If u transpose du is bigger than or equal to 0 for all u, we say that d is positive semi-definite. Okay. The next thing is that um, if U and V are eigenvectors for D, with different eigenvalues, then u and v are orthogonal. Third, there is an orthonormal basis u1 up to uk for rk consisting of eigenvectors um, of d with eigenvalues lambda 1 up to lambda k. So um, in other words, if you have a real symmetric matrix, which is k by k, then you can find k orthogonal unit vectors 
each one of which corresponds to one of the eigenvalues of, um, of D. And this is um, quite different from the a general matrix where um, if you've gone far enough in linear algebra, you'll see that not, it's not the case necessarily that, that you have um, a basis of orthonormal eigenvectors for a general matrix. So, um, and finally, and, and this is maybe the thing which is often called the spectral theorem, suppose we make a, a diagonal matrix out of the eigenvalues of D. And we let P be a matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors with the norms of all of these eigenvectors equal to one. Then D is equal to P lambda P transpose. This is sometimes maybe called the spectral decomposition of D. Um, it says that D is the um, product of uh, a matrix P which is orthogonal, so maybe this is worth pointing out, P times P transpose is equal to the identity matrix because of the orthonormality. If you multiply P times P transpose, the entries are the uh, dot products of the columns, and those are all zero except on the diagonal where they're equal to one. So in other words, P transpose is equal to P inverse, and this means that P is what's called an orthogonal matrix. And geometrically, that means P corresponds to a rigid rotation of k-dimensional space. And D is conjugate, or up to this P lambda P transpose, is a diagonal matrix given by the eigenvalues. So um, just to indicate why this is interesting, we can apply this. to the covariance matrix. And what we find are, is that there are k eigenvalues, all of which are non-negative, because with orthonormal eigenvectors so that means they're all of norm equal to they all have norm 1 and ui dot uj is 0 if i is not equal to j and the reason that the eigenvalues are all bigger than or equal to 0 is because we know that u d u transpose du is the variance of D in the direction of the score U, and that's computed by projecting the values of the data onto the U direction, and then taking the sum of the squares. So it's automatically bigger than or equal to zero, and by the spectral theorem, this condition, this implies that all the eigenvalues are positive, bigger than or equal to zero. And these um, orthonormal directions are called the principal directions for D. And just to give one more um, application of this, so remember that a score, if, if let's suppose that V, uh, that, uh, that S is a score. So it's a linear combination, it's a direction in, um, in RK. So it's a, given by a vector. Well, because we have an orthonormal basis of our, um, of RK, 
We know that we can express S in terms of that orthonormal basis by taking its dot product with each element of the orthonormal basis and then multiplying times the direction. So, uh, and from this we see we can compute the variance of S that, and so let me let, um, let's let, just for simplicity, AI be the dot product of the, of the vector U, a vector S in the direction UI. So S is a sum of AI UI. The variance of S is S transpose DS, which is the sum of AI square, AI, A, well, let's write it out, AI UI times D times, it should be D0, I guess, times the sum of AI UI, and here I have a transpose. But this is the sum of AI UI transpose times the sum of AI D0 UI. And D0, these are eigenvectors with eigenvalues lambda. So this is the sum of AI UI transpose times the sum of AI lambda I UI. And if you expand this out, this is the sum of AI AJ lambda I lambda J UI transpose UJ, sum over all pairs IJ. And these terms are all zero unless I equals J because they're orthonormal and they're one if I does equal J. So the only terms that survive here are the sum. Oh, sorry, there's no, there's only lambda J. There's, there's only one lambda. It comes from one of the lambdas. The sum a i squared lambda i. So the variance of s, if you write s in terms of the principal directions, the variance of s is just the sum of a i squared lambda i. And maybe as a final remark, just to drive home the fact that, that the largest direction corresponds to the largest eigenvalue, um, if, if we assume that S has norm one, so S is a direction somewhere on the sphere, and we want to maximize the variance. Well, in this format, we're really just trying to maximize the sum of A I squared lambda I with the condition that A one squared plus a k squared equals one. And if you want to make this function here as big as possible, subject to this condition, then you should take the term where the, the first, the lambda one is the largest of the lambdas. You should put all your money into the first coordinate because that's going to give you a bunch of lambda ones. You're, otherwise, you're going to have to take, use some of your AIs to pick up smaller lambdas. And so the maximum value happens when a1 equals 1, all the others equal 0. So s is u1, and the variance is the biggest eigenvalue. So the largest possible variance you can get is the largest eigenvalue. And this is an application of the spectral theorem. Um, if we had known these facts from the beginning, we would not have had to have done all of our taking of derivatives and so forth. We could have just said our covariance matrix is a real K by K symmetric matrix, and we would immediately be able to go to do this calculation. But one way of proving the uh, the spectral theorem, which is which I pointed up pointed out up there, is actually to use the Lagrange multipliers ar multipliers argument that we just um, went through.